Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here, uh, and in today's video, we're going to be talking through some player props I like on prize picks for the week 5 slate of NFL games. Uh, for this video specifically, we're going to be focusing on the Sunday slate, so all the games that are happening on Sunday. Um, we do have a game in London again, so we have a, a Sunday morning game, and I actually do have a prop that I like in that game. Um, I did make a video last week specifically for the London game, but I decided not to do that this week. Um, instead, we're just going to cover the full Sunday slate, and again, I do have a prop in that London game we're going to talk about, but I have four plays total that we're going to give out in this video, um, and as always, guys, we're going to talk through uh, all four of these plays and share why I like them. Before we do get started, though, breaking down the plays, if you guys do enjoy these prize picks videos, if they help you out, please uh, hit that like button down below, guys. I always appreciate the likes. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you have not yet, and if you guys are new to prize picks, if you have never checked out prize picks before, you can sign up for Price Picks and use my promo code, promo code NOAA. When you do sign up, you will get your first deposit matched up to $100 when you sign up for Price Picks with my promo code. So be sure to check them out if you have not yet and use that code when you sign up. So that way you do get your deposit bonus. Uh, we all uh, we are also partnering up with Sleeper, and I do want to give a quick shout out to Sleeper. If you guys have never heard of Sleeper, you can sign up for Sleeper as well. Download their app either on the App Store or on the Google Play Store. Whether you have an iPhone or Android, they do have an app for both. Download their app, use that promo code NOAA over on Sleeper, and you'll also get your first deposit matched up to $100. Now, uh, Sleeper, very similar to Price Picks and you know, a lot of these other DFS pick'em sites, but there's something a little bit different about Sleeper. They do offer a dynamic payout system. So on Sleeper, um, you know, there's really not a ton of limits when it comes to how much, you know, or how much of a payout you can get on an entry. So on Sleeper, you can win up to 100x your money. You can make up to eight pick entries over there. So they do offer some really, really high payouts. And if you're one of those people that likes to chase for those high payouts, I definitely recommend giving Sleeper a try. Again, if you guys are not signed up for Sleeper, download their app, use that promo code NOAA, and you will get your first deposit matched up to $100. Uh, but yeah, guys, let's talk through the, uh, the prospect slate for week five. What I'm liking this week, uh, four plays total we're going to talk about. We're going to start off in the receptions category, and we're going to take a look at Stefan Diggs' reception prop of six and a half, and this is an over that I like. Uh, more than six and a half receptions for Stefan Diggs. That's going to be the first play we roll with. This is coming from the uh, the London game, so um, make sure you get this in. This is obviously a game that starts early Sunday morning. But taking a look at Diggs this season, they've obviously the Bills have played four games so far this year. Diggs is over this line in three out of four games in their week one game against the Jets. He saw 13 targets, had 10 receptions in that game. Their week two game against the Raiders, seven targets, seven receptions. Week three against the uh, against Washington, 12 targets and eight receptions. And then last week against Miami, he had seven targets and six receptions. It's worth noting that last week, that game was a big blowout win for the for the Bills. So they really didn't have to throw the ball a ton in that game. Um, you know, they won that game 48 to 20. I'm pretty sure a lot of the starters got pulled early in that game because it was such a blowout. I mean, Josh Allen only threw the ball 25 times last week. Diggs still got six receptions, even on just 25 pass attempts from Allen. Typically, though, we can expect like 30, 35 pass attempts from Josh Allen, sometimes like 40 plus. I mean, week one against the Jets, he threw the ball 41 times. Week two against the Raiders, 37 pass attempts. Week three against Washington, 32 pass attempts. We know that Stephon Diggs is going to get the volume in this Bills offense. He's going to be the top target for Josh Allen. That's kind of been the case the last few seasons. And, you know, obviously the, the Bills do have other guys that, you know, can take targets away from Diggs. They have, you know, Kincaid, who's, you know, young and, uh, young and up-and-coming tight end. They have Dawson Knox, Gabe Davis, but still... Diggs is going to be the number one target in this you know, Bills offense. We should expect him to get probably nine to ten targets a week. And with his you know, low A dot, he's typically a guy that doesn't run a ton of deep routes. He can catch some deep balls, but he does run a lot of quick slants, stuff like that. He's a guy that can usually catch a lot of the, the targets he gets. Obviously, Josh Allen's a really accurate passer. So if we're going to see nine, ten targets a week from Stephon Diggs, I like his chance of getting seven receptions. Um, this is a game that you know, I think can be pretty high scoring. This game does have a 48.5 total. So we should see a lot of points scored here, hopefully a lot of plays run, um, hopefully a lot of pass attempts for Josh Allen. And if Josh Allen's throwing the ball you know, 35 times, I like Diggs' chances of getting seven receptions. Again, last week Diggs, uh, Diggs got six receptions on only 25 pass attempts from Josh Allen. That was a game where the Bills were super efficient scoring the ball, so they didn't have to really throw the ball a ton. Um, they weren't really playing from behind. They, they won that game you know, easily. This is a game against the Jaguars that should be pretty competitive, should be close. Bills are favored by five and a half, um, but the game is in London, so you know, obviously they don't really have like the home field advantage or anything. Uh, but yeah, I like this play quite a bit, and if you do look at DK Sportsbook right now, uh, right now on DK Sportsbook, Stephon Diggs is minus 140 
favored to go over six and a half uh, receptions. So I wouldn't be surprised if you do see prize picks bump this line up to seven with this being minus 140 on DK. Um, hopefully, again, by the time you're watching this video, it'll still be, uh, still be at six and a half. But that's the first play I like for today, uh, for Sunday, I guess I should say. And then the next play we're going to look at is going to be in the receiving yards category. We're going to take a look at Dalton Schultz, 28 and a half receiving yards. This is an under that I like. Uh, so less than 28 and a half receiving yards for Dal uh, Dalton Schultz. Now, you take a look at Dalton Schultz's game log this season. Uh, he's played four games with the Texans. He's obviously on a new team this year. And if you take a look at Schultz so far this season, he's kind of been like a, a boom-bust you know, guy. So week one against the Ravens, he saw four targets, had just two catches for four yards. Um, so that, that game's in there. I, for some reason, though, they don't have some of the other games in here. Prize picks, you know, you shouldn't be looking at prize picks last five scoring anyway, but their, their game locks have kind of been, like, not correct lately. So just take advantage of, or, you know, Kind of, you know, note that, guys. Uh, but again, you shouldn't really be focusing on last five game logs anyway. It is worth noting, though, that the prize picks last five game logs have, have been inaccurate lately. Um, but week one against Baltimore, four targets, two catches for four yards from uh, Dalton Schultz. Then week two against the Colts, seven targets, four catches for 34 yards. So he did go over this line in that game. But then week three against Jacksonville, just three targets, one catch for nine yards. And then last week against Pittsburgh, he only saw three targets, but he did catch all three of those balls for 42 yards. So he's over this line, in, or he's under this line, I should say, in two out of four games this season. But if you really you know, look more into it, and if you look at the snap counts for Dalton Schultz, his role has slowly been going, like, it's slowly been getting worse. So in week one, he played 81% of the snaps. But then in week two, he played 71% of the snaps. In week three, he played 68% of the snaps. And then last week, he saw 40, or he played 49% of the snaps. The, the Texans have actually been playing four tight ends. You know, the, the last three weeks, the Texans have had four tight ends that they've been given snaps to. Now, some of these guys probably you know, are going to be mostly out there for blocking, whereas obviously Schultz, when he's out there, he's going to be out there for receiving. But the snaps have been going down for Dalton Schultz. He's not really a guy that's been able to get a lot of targets in this Texans offense. You know, C.J. Stroud has really been locking in on you know, his receivers. He hasn't really been targeting the tight ends a ton. And if we're only going to get like three, maybe four targets for Dalton Schultz here, I think we got a pretty good chance of cashing this under of 28 and a half receiving yards. Schultz is typically not a guy that runs a ton of deep routes either. So even if he does catch like three or four balls, I mean, it's not a guarantee that he's going to get 29 yards on three or four receptions. He could catch, you know, I mean, week one, he had two catches and it only went for four yards. So he's not like a big play tight end. He's not a guy that typically is going to, you know, catch a bunch of deep balls or anything. So far with the, you know, with the Texans, he hasn't been able to really get a ton of targets either. I think most weeks he probably sees like three or four targets. And with you know that low type of volume with the snap counts going down as well for Schultz, with the Texans playing four tight ends right now, I mean, this is a spot that I think, or this is an under that I definitely think we can cash. And I do think this is a you know, good matchup as well for an under going up against Atlanta, just because Atlanta is a team that, you know, when Atlanta has the ball, they're going to run the ball a ton. They're going to kill the clock. Atlanta likes to keep the the opposing offense just off the field as much as possible. We see a lot of games that Atlanta plays in that they wind up being like low scoring just because of how Atlanta plays. And I could definitely see this kind of being like a low scoring, slow game as well. Maybe the Texans don't have the ball as much as they have, you know, the last few weeks. The Texans have been running like a lot of plays. They've been throwing the ball a ton. I don't know if this is going to be a game where you're going to have to see CJ Stroud throw the ball like 40 times just because this should be a close game. This shouldn't be a game where like the Texans are playing from behind or anything. So I like this under quite a bit, and if you take a look at DK Sportsbook right now, they actually have this line set at 27 and a half, and Juice is favoring the under. So on DK Sportsbook right now, uh, the line set at 27 and a half with minus 130 odds favoring the under. So you know the under is favored at 27 and a half. Obviously, getting the line at 28 and a half just makes this under look even better. So that's the second play that I like, guys. Less than 28 and a half receiving yards for Dalton Schultz. And then the next two plays I like are both going to be in the rush yards category. We're going to go to Devon A-Chain, or I can't remember how you say his name, whether it's like A-Chain or A-Chain or something like that, but we're going to take a look at his uh, rush yards prop of 50 and a half. And I like the over here. People you know, might be a little bit skeptical on this play just because A-Chain this season has been splitting time with Raheem Mostert, and he's likely going to continue to split time with Raheem Mostert. But he has been super efficient as a runner this season, and the, the volume has kind of been increasing. The snap counts have been increasing each week. Now, last week, he only got eight carries against, uh, against um, I can't remember who they played the last week. Let me pull up the game log. Against, um, against Buffalo, that's right. He only got eight carries last week, but he was super efficient with those touches. Had 101 rushing yards on just eight carries. 
their week two game against Denver, that was the game, or the week three game against Denver, that was the game where he erupted, had 18 carries for 203 yards. He's only really played in two full games this season. Now, he was active in their game against New England, but he got just one carry in that game. Obviously, the role is different for A. Chain now. Like, he has earned a bigger role in this offense. He has played so well. He's been so efficient on the ground. And I think, you know, the, the Dolphins, they're going to continue to involve two running backs, but I think A. Chain has kind of earned the starter's role. Like, and I wouldn't be surprised if you see him take the first carry um, and, you know, Mostert kind of be the backup. Either way, you're going to see involvement for both these guys. Last week, you did see Mostert play 43% of the snaps, A. Chain 60%. The week before that, Mostert 51% of the snaps, A-Chain 41%. So the snaps have been going up each week for A-Chain, and they've been going down for Mostert. Does that trend continue? That's something we don't really know, but I think we just kind of have to buy into that trend that A-Chain has taken over as the RB1 in Miami. And this is a really good matchup against the Giants. This is a spot where the Giants are, or this is the spot where the Dolphins should be playing with the lead. They should be able to run the ball a ton here. I mean, last week they were playing from behind, so they didn't really run the ball a ton against Buffalo, but we did see in their week three game against Denver. Uh, that was a game, obviously, they that was the massive win for the Dolphins when they put up 70 points, and they were able to run the ball a ton in that game because they were playing with such a lead. That should be the case this week. The Dolphins are at home. They're favored by 12 and a half. This is a spot where you should see them playing with a lead, should be able to run the ball a lot, especially late in the game, just kind of trying to chew the clock up. And if we're going to see, you know, 12, 13, 14 carries for A-Chain, especially with how efficient he's been on the ground this season, I like his chances of getting 51 rush yards. And if you take a look this season, if you look at this matchup, I mean, this matchup's been really good for opposing running backs. So far this season, the Giants, they're giving up the fourth most rush yards to opposing running backs, and they're giving up the third most rush attempts. So teams are running all over the Giants this year. The Dolphins should be able to run all over the Giants this week, and they should be playing with the lead, which should mean you know, a lot of carries for both A-Chain and Mostert, and especially A-Chain with how much you know his role's been increasing, with how the snaps have been going up for him. If he's going to see double-digit carries, I think he's got a good chance of averaging at least you know four or five yards per carry against this horrible you know Giants defense. So that's the third play I like. Also on DK Sportsbook, do want to mention that play. Um, the line is set at 50 and a half on DK Sportsbook, but it is favoring the over a, a pretty decent amount. I think it was last time I checked it was minus 125. Let me see. So a chain his line on DK Sportsbook it is set at 50 and a half, and it is minus 125 favoring the over. Um, obviously, those odds are not huge, but you know I'll still take this play on prize picks at 50 and a half. I do like this play quite a bit. So that's the third play I like this week, guys. And the fourth and final play we're going to talk about, we're going to take a look at Tony Pollard's rush yards of 56 and a half. And this is another over that I like. So more than 56 and a half rush yards for Tony Pollard. Take a look at Pollard's game log this season. He's over this line in three out of the four games that he's played um, for the Cowboys this season. Week one against the Giants had 14 carries, 70 rush yards in that game. Week two against the Jets, 25 carries, 72 rush yards in that game. Week three against Arizona, 23 carries, 122 rush yards in that one. And then last week against the Patriots, only 11 carries for 47 yards. But you really have to think about the Cowboys this season and how their games have been played out. And if you take a look at Pollard's snaps this season, his snaps have only been high one week, and that was week three against Arizona. That was the game they actually lost. That was a competitive game. Well, week one against the Giants, that was a game they won 40 to nothing. Uh, Pollard only played 64% of the snaps. Pretty sure he got pulled early in that game because it was a massive blowout. Week two against the Jets was another easy win for the Cowboys. They won that game, what? Um, they won that game 30 to 10. Pollard only played 64% of the snaps in that game. Well, the week three game against Arizona, which they lost, that was a game where Pollard played 86% of the snaps. And then week four against New England last week, another blowout win for the Cowboys. They won 38 to 3 and Pollard only played 53% of the snaps. Pollard's snaps were down in those three games just because the, the Cowboys were easily winning those games, and they didn't really have to play Pollard late in the game. Well, this is a game against the 49ers that should be a really good game. I'm excited to watch this one on Sunday night, and it should be a competitive game as well. Now, the matchup here is definitely tough. The 49ers have been one of the best run defenses this season, and just like over the last few years, they've been a really tough team to run on. But Tony Pollard it is, is an incredibly efficient runner, He's a guy that typically averages like four to five yards per carry. He's got a good offensive line behind him. And if you take a look at his games without Ezekiel Elliott, obviously his Zeke is no longer on the team. So this is Pollard's backfield now. Pollard has played seven games without Ezekiel Elliott, de uh, dating back all the way to 2020. He is over this rush yards line in six out of those seven games. Had 131 rush yards on 14 carries against the Bears. 122 rush yards on 23 carries against Arizona. Talked about that one. 
Uh, he had 115 rush yards on 22 carries against Green Bay. Had 72 rush yards against the Jets. We talked about that. 70 rush yards against the Giants. That was their week one game. Uh, he did have uh, 69 rush yards on 12 carries against San Francisco. They played back in 2020. That was a game without Zeke. And then that game against the Patriots, 47 rush yards on 11 carries. But if you take a look at his rush yards in the games without Zeke, 131, 122, 115, 72, 70, 69, 47. So he's over in six out of seven. And if you take a look at the rush attempts in those, in those games, the volume has been really good on the ground. Like he's been getting a lot of carries, 25, 23, 22, 14, 14, 12, and 11 carries. As long as this game is somewhat competitive, I think we can expect Pollard to play 70 to 80% of the snaps. I think we can project him for probably like 14 to 17 carries, somewhere in between there. And again, this is a guy that typically averages like four to five yards per carry because he's so efficient. He's so, such an explosive runner. He's a guy that can always break off a long run. And even though the 49ers have been a really tough team to run on this season, this is still an over that I do like quite a bit. Just banking on the talent of Pollard here, banking on the volume, which he should get in what should be a competitive game. Hopefully the Cowboys, you know, don't blow them out here or get blown out because obviously that would hurt us because Pollard would then, you know, lose snaps, which that's happened three out of four games this season. But their one competitive game, which they actually lost, that was a game where Pollard played a ton of snaps and got, you know, uh, again, a lot of carries and a lot of rush yards as well. So that's the fourth and final play that I like for this week, guys. Tony Pollard, more than 56 and a half rush yards. And I do also want to mention that on DK Sportsbook right now, uh, they do have Pollard's line set at 55 and a half, but it is heavily favoring the over, minus 130, uh, favoring the over on 55 and a half rush yards for Pollard. Uh, on prize picks, the line's at 56 and a half. I'm still fine taking the over there. Um, so this is what I like, guys, for this week five NFL slate for Sunday. Again, we got some plays, you know, kind of all throughout the day. We got a play in the early game, the London game. We got a play from Sunday Night Football, and then we got two plays from the one o'clock games. Stephon Diggs, six and a half receptions taken uh, over there. Dalton Schultz, less than 28 and a half receiving yards. Devon A. Chain, more than 50 and a half rush yards. And Tony Pollard, more than 56 and a half rush yards. These are four plays, guys, that I like for this Sunday slate. Uh, kind of taking a first look at the board right now, recording this video on Friday. Uh, but I'll be taking a look at the board again um, you know, throughout Friday, on Saturday. And I'll be sharing some more plays I like for prospects this week. I'll be sharing those over on Patreon. As always, you can check out the Patreon linked down below in the description. I do give out additional prospects plays over there. Also give out sleeper entries over on Patreon. If you want to check that out, again, that's linked down below in the description. Uh, but good luck this week, guys. Thanks, as always, for supporting the content, supporting the channel. Appreciate you guys a ton. Hit that like button. If you guys enjoyed, hit that subscribe button as well if you have not yet. Be sure to go check out Prize Picks. If you guys are not signed up for Prize Picks yet, sign up. Use that promo code NOAA, and you will get your first deposit matched up to $100 when you sign up for Prize Picks with my promo code. Uh, but good luck this week, guys. Thanks as always for watching the video. Support the content. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.